Hey guys, John here. Uh, it's been a while since my last video, but I wanted to make this before the holidays. Before Christmas came. And, uh, first I want to reply to a comment that was on one of my videos from, uh, uh, Horikus. Um, I'm probably saying that wrong, but, uh, I apologize if I do. If I did. Um... And his comment was about, uh, really about a user, he's a first time DM and he has this NPC in his game that, from what I gather from what he stated, it's supposed to be kind of like a mover and shaker, They're like one of the PC's, uh, re relatives and kind of, you know, has ideas on this looming prophecy. And I just want to go into NPC's real quick and using them. It is a tough art with NPCs because you have to try to make them appeal to the party as they contribute, but you don't want them to over-contribute to the point where the adventure is not about them. The campaign is not about the, p the players and more about the NPCs. And that's something you don't want to do. Um, I always have it where they are the signpost. And if you think in like games like Grand Theft Auto, or Fallout. You have just an NPC that when you interact, you get a quest. And that's an NPC in my game. It's that signpost. They have stuff for you to do, but you don't have to go you don't have to do that. You could go do your own thing. You could go to the Tomb Fours when they say go to Castle Greyhawk, for example. Um But yeah, um also on that note, um Having, um, have NPCs have a secret, because, uh, that, about, uh, the big grand, uh, prophecy in your world that they can't tell, or they can't, they can't willingly tell, you know, because one, that gives them a secret, and it'll make the, it'll make the PCs feel very uneasy, like, why is this drow friending us? Like, yeah, I know it's uh, your brother or sister or whatever, but I don't... They look shady. And one way you can do that is they have a tell. You know, they have... they Not their hair, or they have a funny voice, or they have a raspy voice. Um, Example, uh, Riceland from the Dragonland series. He... If, don't want to go into spoiler territory if you haven't read Dragonlance, but uh, he has a cough. And he's very frail. So he's very memorable in that regard. You know, he's like, can I trust him? Can I trust this wizard who's coughing and wheezing and doing it a lot? But anyway, that's enough on NPCs right now. And I hope I answer uh, Horikus' question. Um... Another topic I want to go into this video is campaign world building. It's one of my favorite things to do in D&D, or really anything, because I'm a world builder. I, I love it. Um, I just want to go into it briefly. This is probably something I'll cover in, very, in several videos. But uh, first I wanted to cover um, inspiration for your campaign world, whether it be whatever. Uh, do things... Um, <laughs> my screen there. But yeah, uh, inspiration for campaign worlds. Uh, if it's... I started off with my world very, uh, Tolkien. Uh, there were mountains in the north, and there they were orcs, and they were evil, and the PCs had to go kill them. It's a very simple world. But yeah, that's... You can start there. It's a very good building block. Um... Sorry, I have a little bit of a cold. Another one would have to be, um... Uh... Forgotten Realms. Uh... It's a very good setting. Uh, this is the 4th edition one. And, uh, I know the 4th edition setting is not that liked. I don't know. I'm okay with it. But this was my first Forgotten Realms setting book I owned. But yeah, take ideas from that. If you like certain ideas from certain things. But yeah, um, or if you want to take a more post-apocalyptic aspect to it, you can take it from the Dark Sun setting. 
which is basically it's D and D Fallout. Basically, it's or it's D and D meets Fallout meets Conan, and it it's awesome. I'll probably do more videos on Dark Sun because I like it. But uh, yeah, or so or uh, nothing you can do. Um, so yeah, uh, that's a lot of resources there. Or um. Or, uh, actually, another thing I do, I scour settings. I take things from older settings that I don't own the books for. I take things from the Planescape setting, the Spelljammer setting, the Ravenloft. Um, as you already know, Dragonlance is a big inspiration for me. Um, but yeah, no, I, I take things from Tolkien. I take things from Greyhawk. But anyway, moving on. Once you get an inspiration for a world, and you start working out the fine tunes of it. Keep it unique. Don't make it like if you're doing a Tolkien Middle Earth style game, make it unique to you. Um a tip that I remember reading in my fourth edition DMG is your world, your setting is unique to you. Don't be afraid to do that. Don't be afraid to say, well in this world orcs are good. And dwarves are bad, and elves are bad, but orcs and goblins, they're cool. They're cool. They're actually working with the humans. But, uh, one second. Gotta plug this in. But yeah, um, that's the thing. Just keep it unique. Or, um, put racism in it, like half-breed races. In my game, um... Half elves are not respected. Halflings are not respected. Any type of half breed is not respected. Because they wouldn't be. In our world, a half elf wouldn't be respected. Um, or anything, like a half human, half whatever. Just wouldn't be respected because humans, being humans, us being us, were ignorant. But anyway, that's psych that's more psychology and philosophy. But anyway, uh, that's just some topics there. Um, if anybody uh, has any questions, feel free to comment below. I'll also, uh, in the description, I'll post an email address for me that you can email me your questions and I get back to you that way. Um, please keep them positive. I only want positive and if you really have a question. But anyway, yeah, uh, make sure you comment, shoot me an email if you have any questions, and uh, comment uh, and subscribe. And that's me, John, your friendly neighborhood dungeon master. Uh, happy gaming, and have a very, very merry Christmas.